Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about blotchy tomatoes. Now, this can come in many shapes, forms, and sizes, but it can range anything from the top color not ripening, ripening to actual blotchy polka dotted looking tomatoes in general, varying from deep red to lighter reds, even yellow or green, depending on how severe your case is. And we're going to be going over whether or not these blotchy tomatoes is a disease, a fungus, a bacteria, something that's naturally happening, an environmental factor, a nutri nutrient factor, you name it, how we control it, if there is anything we can do, and everything else in between. So let's jump right into it. Now, the blotchiness isn't always just on the surface. When we actually take a bite of these tomatoes, we may notice that there is some blotchiness inside on the interior of the tomato itself. And this is the case for a vast majority of the blotchy tomatoes that we harvest. Now, what exactly causes this? Well, we can't really narrow it down to just one thing, but I did talk about mosaic virus in a separate video when it comes to Monstera deliciosa and having a variegated plant. This is the same virus, but it is obviously able to also infect tomatoes. This most likely is the rarest case or the rarest thing to happen and a majority of it probably has to do with environmental factors. Now you can get tomatoes that are resistant or cultivars of tomatoes that are resistant to this blotchiness. However, because there are so many factors that cause the blotchy, tomato blushiness in the tomatoes it's really hard to narrow down what cultivar to get based on what's happening in your patch however if it's happening just one year then next year is fine there's no cause to worry and we will talk about that a little bit later so the first thing that happens with blotchy tomatoes is it is a nutrient issue meaning it is low potassium or very high nitrogen now the plot that i'm noticing this in is my conventional plot if you guys are new to the channel you may not know this but i have a plot dedicated to conventionally growing tomatoes using conventional fertilizers miracle grow and particular and then the other plot I'm using humic acid organic methods of management and I'm not seeing that blotchiness over on that side however the organic side has not yet ripened and I have a lot less tomatoes on the organic side but the tomatoes I do have are probably three to four times the size of the tomatoes on the conventional side of the garden between the two flower beds themselves. So the conventional side has a ton of tomatoes, all of which are very, very tiny. And they're actually very tiny for the variety I have, which is beefsteak, meaning they're supposed to be dinner, like they're supposed to be sandwich sized tomatoes and they're not nowhere close. They look like a glorified, basically tumbler tomato. So the only outlying factor, if I was to write a paper on these two plots, the mitigating factor, the factor that I would definitely report on is the fact that the conventional bed is in a lot more sun, meaning it pretty much gets sun from sun up to sun down. I only have so many limited resources. I mean, the channel's not huge and I can't do you know, professional grade research for you guys. So the bed beside it is in a little bit shadier of a spot. And this summer has been hot. Like I think it's 38 degrees outside right now and it is August 15th. I mean, it's insane. We're 35, 40 degrees Celsius nearly every single day. And so the heat is definitely a factor. The sunshine is definitely a factor when it comes to the conventional versus the organically grown um, bed. However, excess nitrogen and lack of potassium can be the cause. This could be due to both pH, but it also could be due to just the way of watering and how much water the soil is able to get, the microbial activity that's happening, which will be reduced in a raised bed, exposed to high sun and high heat for an entire year. So it could be a nutrient issue. 
The other two nutrients that will cause this is actually calcium and boron, and we'll get into why this is the case a little bit later. Now, with the organic bed, I am using Evolve Organic Fertilizer, calcium essentials in particular, and I have been adding that to that bed. Is there more calcium in the organic side than the conventional side? Yes, I would argue that there most likely is. However, Western Canadian soils and uh, just North America in general, the US as well, our soils are very high in micronutrients, very high in magnesium, calcium, boron, those sorts of things. And so the issue goes right back to the pH level and how different pH levels actually release different nutrients. So my mindset is more so geared towards the fact that it could be more of a pH problem um, rather than the latter. So I don't have like, you know, the best equipment to do this. I have my soil testing uh, book that I wrote. And so I'm going to be doing a, I'm gonna be doing a pH test with that well, based on the DIY at home method I have in my book itself. That'll be a separate video, but I'm gonna test each one separately at the end of the year once I get a better idea what's going on in the area. But pH may be the cause of my blotchiness. Now, the last factor, which I, lean towards as being probably the most likely factor for my blotchiness is varying temperatures and varying luminosity, meaning sunshine and heat. So while it is 40 degrees during the day when the sun is out, once that sun sets, it is getting down to 10 degrees Celsius, 10, 15 degrees Celsius. So we are, have a very wide spectrum of temperature, which is less than ideal when it comes to fruit development. We want it to be relatively stable, and that is just not happening this year. The other issue is, again, the sun. This bed is just pummeled by sun day in, day out, and I don't think that helps whatsoever. There could be some other minor factors involved with this, such as irregular watering or uh, changes in watering, but I just don't think that's so much the case because both plots have been watered the exact same way the entire time, like it is an experiment. I'm trying to keep the factors that are controllable controlled as much as possible. So I just, I doubt that this is the problem. However, it could be. It's just unlikely. So I'm gonna lean more so towards the heat and the sun being the cause for my blotchy tomatoes. And I'm going to lean away from the nutrient factor. And the only thing that's going to change my mind is when I do the video in the fall, when it comes to pH and I show the pH differences, if one is drastically different than the other, then my hypothesis may change but right now it is heat and sun so you're probably wondering what causes this if it's not fact uh fungi bacteria a virus and it's an environmental factor what physiologically is going on with the plant and this is actually a very simple process that is very well understood we can see this outside of just tomatoes we can see this in peppers for example we can see this in almost any sort of fruiting vegetable that has yellow orange or red coloration to it, oddly enough. So the process is initiated by lipocene and lipocene is a factor involved in cartogenesis. I butchered that, I'm so sorry, but uh, carotenoids, I'm sure you guys have heard of that before. And that is the color spectrum involved in reds, orange, and yellow. And the regulator in all of this is abscisic acid. It's kind of, that's the control of the entire physiological uh, chemical makeup of what's happening. So in order to understand that, we need to look at what actually abscisic citric acid is and what components are involved in it. And ta-da, boron is one of the main bosses. Behind that, um, calcium and potassium, obviously like we talked about before, are a factor in this. However, calcium and potassium generally are used in other forms of fruit development, not so much the carotenoid expression in the plant itself. So boron is the key. 
So the abscisic acid is degraded or oxidized by enzymes and then there's a hormone called ABA and it comes in and it binds with it and that's what gives us this beautiful color. It's the same color we see in leaves in the fall, you name it. However, when there is a very high heat or um, changes in luminosity, these enzymes and this process starts to break down and it doesn't happen as readily. And that is what gives us our blotchy look. So there is one chemical out there that you can purchase if you are noticing this happening to your tomatoes. And essentially it is a boron elixir that you give. And it just helps with the actual formin, formation of, of cystic acid to allow the um, physiological cycle to take place and fill out those red, orange, and yellow colors within the fruit itself. Now, it's not necessary. You can eat these tomatoes, they taste just fine. They just have lower sugar content generally because that is also a part of the whole enzyme process and the oxidization of the, the entire process. So it won't taste as fruity, it won't have as much of a sugar taste to it, but they are still completely edible. There's nothing wrong with the tomato itself. So just something to keep in mind. But there you have it, the complete guide of red, yellow, and orange tomatoes, not turning red, yellow, and orange. The blotchiness or the stripiness or unripening or uneven ripening of tomatoes is all caused by one enzymatic relationship that has to take place in our tomato or our pepper that can't take place when there's high heat, high sun, lack of boron, lack of calcium, lack of potassium, or an excess of nitrogen. There are some minor factors that can play into this, such as improper pruning, lack of light because you haven't pruned enough, but for the most part, it's going to be caused by those main factors being nutrients or pH restricting nutrients and heat slash sun. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below if you have blotchy tomatoes. If you do, I'm assuming you are in Western Canada right now because it is blotchy tomato city here due to our ridiculous heat. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.